Hi, Lake Speed Jr., Total Steel Piston Rings, and I'm back here in Moments, Illinois, with my buddy Charles Navarro from Ellen Engineering. So, in the first video, Charles, we talked a little bit about alu seal, lock seal, bore scoring, even used our handy dandy profilometer, which is our micro measuring tool that can measure down to a millionth of an inch, by the way. Um, so, we used the profilometer to measure the bore to talk about why bore scoring is a problem. In the next video, this video, we're going to talk about how you can know if you're having bore scoring. So Charles, talk a little bit about the ways people can go about determining whether or not they have bore scoring. So um, most of you, if you're watching this video, probably already know that bore scoring is an issue with engines that have Locasil and Alusil uh, engine blocks. Um, you can bore scope cylinders mm -hmm. uh, to check for bore scoring and uh, as your visual inspection as your visual inspection and uh, in particular with uh, the m96 m97 engines it's very important to actually scope the cylinders from the sump so here's where the sump it would be on the engine and you would put the piston at top dead center and then you would fish a bore scope from the sump area into the cylinder bore because the bore scoring always starts at BDC, not at TDC. So not until the problem is very bad and you actually have physical symptoms of piston slap, oil consumption, uh, sooty tailpipes, oil in the back bumper. Uh, at, not until you're that far along will you probably see scoring with the piston parked at BDC through the spark plug. So it's very important to check from the sump on those engines. With but, the piston all the way up so you can see that same scoring we can see right here at the very bottom of the cylinder. Yeah. Okay, so those are visual inspections that require putting the car up on a lift and doing all this kind of stuff. Is there a way, trick question by the way, <laughs> is there a way to actually know whether or not this is progressing without going through all those physical maneuvers of getting inside the engine putting on a lift and looking visually inside the engine. Oil analysis. <laughs> so I was setting him up, right? So yes, our good friend, the oil analysis kit, uh, we recommend Speed Diagnostics because they have the correct machine and um, we'll call it profile for these kind of engines. Because as we discussed, what's this block made out of? Aluminum with silicon. Right, so guess what? You're not gonna see iron cylinder bore wear on one of these samples from one of these engines. So the guys at Speed Diagnostics know to look for silicon and aluminum in the oil as potential signs for bore scoring. Most labs use a generic diesel oil standard for the trucks to go up and down the road, which are cast iron liners with chromium rings. So for them, it's high iron, high chromium, says there's a cylinder problem. For these engines, you're not going to see high iron. Yeah, That's a you, cylinder problem. <laughs> and if you use one of those labs, what typically happens, they'll tell you, oh, your air, air filter's dirty. You need to change your air filter if you have high silicon levels. And that's not the case with these engines. And the same with aluminum levels in, mm -hmm. in the oil. But they're looking, I get like Lake said, at iron levels. Iron levels in these engines even in an engine that is suffering bore scoring, is going to be very low, what, what most other labs would say is normal. So there's many instances where people will have a PPI done and they'll think they're doing well and having a, an oil sample taken, oil analysis done, and use a lab that is not critically knowledgeable about Porsche engines and they'll get a clean bill of health from the used oil analysis and then they start having problems they send email us the oil analysis, and it was clear it's night and day that the engine had bore scoring even before it had any symptoms. And that's why use oil analysis is critical, but even more so using a lab that understands these engines. And also, uh, Lake didn't mention, but Speed Diagnostics uses the um, RDE yep. method instead of the ICP, so it has double the resolution. So you're seeing a lot more of what's in the oil that other labs are missing. Other thing too that Speed Diagnostics offers is fuel analysis, uh, or, or sorry, fuel dilution analysis uh, via gas chromatography, as opposed to looking at just flash point and saying, oh, we think there's this much uh, fuel in the oil because 
Fuel is a problem with this, and we're going to get that into the third video of how you prevent it. Um, but knowing how much fuel is in the oil precisely is critical. So the gas chromatography method that Speed Diagnostic uses is the at most accurate way of determining the amount of fuel dilution in the oil. So with rotating disc electrode RDE, you get twice the amount of particle resolution. We get better fuel con or better fuel dilution uh, analysis, and then obviously the proper spectrum uh, of what where metals are related to which components in the engine. That way, you have a better understanding because the beautiful thing about used oil analysis is you got oil moving all through the engine, and a sample of that oil is no different than going to the doctor and taking a blood sample and then be able to know what's going on in your heart, what's going on in your lungs, your brain, your kidney, your liver. You can know all of that through uh, medical, you know, oil, uh, blood analysis. This is the same thing for your engine. It can know how much bearing wear <laughs> is occurring. It can see piston skirt wear. It can see bore scoring. It can see camshaft wear. It can see turbo bearing wear. See that a lot in the turbocharged engines. The, the turbocharged engines will always have a higher level of copper in the oil than a natural aspirated engine. Why? Because the bearing, the journal bearing in that turbocharger is bronze. Bronze contains copper. So with all these little details, that's why we recommend Speed Diagnostics to know what's going on. Because the reality is, if you can catch this early on before it becomes this, it's a lot cheaper and easier to fix. I mean, you see this every day, Charles. Talk a little yep. bit about what, what you see that comes in from customers that maybe haven't been doing this or they waited too long to start doing it and what happens. Yeah, you. and the thing is, if you have a clean slate, you check the engine, you bore scope it, you do use all analysis, and you know everything is good, then, then you know, that, and we'll talk about in the third video, what steps you can take to extend the life of your components whether that's what oil you use, what fuel you use, what fuel system treatment uh, products are required, those steps to uh, extend the life of the engine. But on the flip side, uh, we see many instances, uh, everyone knows the intermediate shaft bearing is a big issue with M96 engines. And um, part of our procedure that we recommend before you change that bearing is that you actually qualify the engine. And one of those qualifications is checking for bore scoring because there's no sense in doing a ton of work to the engine and dumping money into it if it already has a problem because then the engine's already compromised and you're, you're wasting your money. So, but like I said, if you qualify your engine and you take these extra steps, then you know you're in a good position, then go ahead and do all your preventative maintenance and then you know you can drive your car and enjoy it and not worry about these issues uh, for the short term. So that's a great question. Uh, it brought to me a question. So the engine with bore scoring at its early stages will still run. Yes, that, that we've had customers that have identified early bore scoring and have driven their cars three years, four years, but they take ex they. They take proactive steps, use better oil, change their oil more often, and other, other steps that we'll go over. Uh, so you can definitely drive the car uh, for quite some time after a diagnosis of bore scoring. It's not immediately terminal, uh, but it's something that will progress slowly and you can slow it down with, with a few simple precautions. Perfect, and one thing to keep in mind, as you said, you can extend the life on, but you have to be careful because at some point, we mentioned the fuel dilution and the oil analysis. One of the things that happens is because you're bore scoring, you're not getting as good, as good a ring seal as you should. What happens is the level of contamination in that oil is going to increase. And as the level of contamination in the oil increases, kind of back to the point with the IMS bearing, makes no sense in changing the IMS bearing if you've got bore scoring that's going to be causing contamination of the oil because that contaminated oil is going to wear everything out in the engine. Eventually, you might see iron in the oil yeah. after all. But if you do, it's already way too late. And that's something if you have the problem, it's probably a good idea. If you're going to nurse the car and keep driving the car, then doing regular analysis so that you can see if the wear levels are staying at a certain particular tr uh, level or if they're starting to escalate and increase, meaning that you're seeing wear in other areas of the engine. Right. And at that point, 
you can say, hey, now I need to shut it off, set it aside, and make plans for what I'm gonna be doing with the engine. That's a great point. Trend analysis is your friend. Every car, every oil, every driver is gonna be a little bit different. I mean, there's standards you can use to, to know where you are, but everybody is gonna have their own profile, if you will. It's taking multiple samples over time that creates that trend analysis which gives you the highest resolution of knowing what's right for you. Or if you're trending upwards, you know you have a problem. Uh, conversely, if you're up here and all of a sudden your numbers drop, you need to also investigate why. So that trend analysis is your number one friend when it comes to doing used oil analysis and determining the health and longevity of your engine. So we've talked about why bore scoring exists, what the problem is, the technical reasons for it, talked about how to measure to detect whether or not you have it. In the next video, let's talk about how you prevent it from happening.